If these walls could talk is something Americans often say about rooms or buildings in which great events have occurred. If the walls of this building could talk, many historical stories could be told. On a beautiful sunny Wednesday in Washington, U.S. President Bill Clinton told some tales of the White House during its 200th anniversary celebration. No matter what the United States' most famous home has had to endure, he said, it has offered a lot of comfort to many people. For two centuries now, Americans have looked to the White House as a symbol of leadership in times of crisis, of reassurance in times of uncertainty, of continuity in times of change, of celebration in times of joy. These walls carry the story of America. Construction began in 1792 from a design by Irish-born architect James Hoban. Although the first president, George Washington, oversaw the construction of the then-called President's House, he was never able to enjoy it. But it was built to last, much like the Founding Fathers' vision in building the United States. The first president to reside at the White House was actually the second president, John Adams. President Adams and his wife Abigail arrived at the unfinished executive mansion on November 1, 1800. The rooms were so big that Mrs. Adams used one to hang laundry. In 1814, however, during the War of 1812, the British burned down the White House. But because it was made with thick, strong outer walls, though the interior was gutted, the exterior endured. It took three years to rebuild. Running water was made available in 1833, and electrical wiring was installed in 1891. It was renamed the White House in 1901. In 1929, a fire in the West Wing damaged the White House, but it was reconstructed and expanded. And in 1945, President Harry S. Truman added a balcony to the structure. Soon after the addition, the building was found to be unstable. It was gutted and rebuilt. But the White House today still has the same thick stone exterior walls from two centuries ago. The White House has been renovated and redecorated many times over the years. President Clinton said these steps taken to preserve the house reinforce today's United States pledge of keeping our forefathers' dreams alive. In renewing this beloved monument to our nation's history and freedom, we also renew our commitment to the dream of our founders, that our democracy built upon bedrocks of liberty and justice will grow ever stronger and remain forever young. Today, the White House still is home to the president and his family, and the home to some past presidents, too, according to some residents and visitors. They claim the ghost of Abraham Lincoln still walks the hallways 135 years after he was assassinated in a nearby theater. It is also a museum which greets up to 6,000 visitors a day.